The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Tuesday, the 10th of May, and thank you to Eric Pesavento, setting for Tommy O'Brien earlier on. Remember, we kick off here at 9, the kickoff show is Tommy O'Brien's show starts at 9, we go right through to Tom O'Brien, wraps it up at 4, it's the sandwich effect, you got the O'Briens at either end. Uh, great thing, and we're looking at the Dow right now, 364, 32,611. Really important phase. And yesterday I was asked and I said, I can't discuss it now, but I will discuss it at some point. Uh, what, what what were the targets that I have for the Dow or the S&P or anything like that on the downside? And I said, I prefer not to just make a statement, a kind of a bold statement that says, oh, that's the number. Uh, because sometimes people just hang on and latch on to that. Well, when markets change. I, I'm going to change. I'm not going to stick with a particular uh, um, outcome that I expected when the conditions have changed. But what I had said, and I'll stick with this, is that 32,000 level, 32,272 was the Dow low. Let me just open this up daily chart right here. That was the low. It was really imperative to see how, how does it hold? How does the whole 32,000 area uh, hold for the Dow? I love these uh, millennial levels, the, uh, the, the hundreds. Etc. It's just really important for me to look at that because it's both a psychological aspect as well as a, a figurative one, one that's there on paper. So that's number one. Now I can talk about something else. I can say, looking at the bigger picture, at any time in May, May is young, we're only the 10th, the 10th day, it was the seventh trading day or something. This is nothing. What we're really looking at here is that if there is a close in the 31,000, under 31,900 at any point in May, I have to consider that there's a chance that you've got a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside from at least the 35,003, 35,400 level. This is called a 35,000 to the 32,000. That's 3,000 points. And that you can consider that over a period of the summer, there's a chance that that would be the place that we'd be looking at. And where would that be? I'd say I wouldn't get too carried away. I'd say 30,000, 30, uh, 30,000, 29,700, that whole area where it just takes out a really important number, in this case, 30,000. That's what I'd be looking at. I don't want to go there. I'm just saying there was a question, and that's the way I would be looking at it. As it stands right now, we need to see if there is a rally this week Tuesday, Wednesday, going into Thursday, maybe it doesn't hold into Friday, but at least a rally that takes into consideration that the histogram is still weak, but better than it was when the Dow was at 32,449, so that's an improvement. The stochastic is higher than it was then. The unbalanced volume is just okay, but... To be able to get the pink nine period moving average in the Dow, this daily chart above the 14, there's so much that has to happen. You would have to, you probably have to see the Dow trading at 32,500 to 32,600 by a week from yesterday, by Monday a week, by, by this coming Monday. And that would really improve. But ah, it's going to take a lot to do that. So as it stands right now, yes, the volatility index, as I was saying in the, in the market update at 10 o'clock, is suggesting to me that a great deal of the pressure, the selling pressure, has been the consistent <coughs> volatility index holding above 28, 29. In fact, for the past couple of days, it's been up in the 32, 34, 35 area. Now it's at 32.39. So what I'm looking at is by the end of the day, and you really have to have the QQQ, in fact, in a leadership role, and this particular point, yeah, it's in a, let me just see. Uh, oh, I'll get there. We'll get to the Qs in a moment. But at this point, at 32.52, you want to see the Dow, which is up 330, up about 430, 
after two o'clock this afternoon with a volati volatility index below 3190. That would say you've got the start of potential rally in the week that could find some support and some short covering. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't want to go into too much into the VIX right now. I want to go through the other indices. There's just so much to do. So let's get there. What we're looking at is the S&P, which had a nice bounce. It's only a bounce so far, 1.43%, up 57 points at 4,048, having gone to the 3,000. Oh, I forgot to type that in. The 3,000. 975.48 level, 3,978 point, I've already forgotten, 45 level, uh, 3,000, <coughs> yeah, uh, 3,009, <laughs> 3,978.45, and now it's trading at 4,049. That is a really nice attempt at a recovery. I have said attempt at a recovery because the day is still very, very, very young. And we'll see what happens. All right. The MACD hasn't started to improve at, at this point. The stochastic still at 16%, very, very weak. The unbalanced volume is just attempting to turn up. Um, there's just a lot that has to happen. Go to the uh, uh, the 120 minute chart is seeing some kind of a turnaround that has it has the capacity to move higher towards the 4093 level um, 4093 level over the coming few days if in fact it takes out today's high which is 4068.82 and it needs to do that fairly soon all right let's get back to our nitty gritties here we're talking about the qqq one two three uh trading at this point it's trading at uh 303.53 up 6.40 up 2.14 percent this is the start of a very nice leg f going to a trough f in the, in the daily chart um a lot needs to happen Yes, there's some improvement in the histogram, but really that bank needs to make a W formation. And that says by this afternoon, the high today so far is 305.75. It's $2 below that. It needs to make up at least one more dollar to the upside and preferably close towards the higher end by the end of the day. And that VIX, as I say, can't be holding yet. It has to be pulling back. And now this is very important. I forgot to discuss this yesterday. The VIXM. The VIXN, which is the um, NDX 100 index volatility, this is a volatility index, and it's trading down from the high of yesterday, which was just under 42. I think it was 41.19. Let me just check. 41.91. Here we are at 39.93. The day is young. This is a leg E, but I don't use Chapman Wave methodology. I always type it in, but we don't expect that you're in the D, E, or F in the volatility index, that it has to turn down. This is an emotional indicator. It's completely independent. And in a moment, if I remember, I will t discuss Vixie, Bondi, Dolly, Goldie, and wait. I'll be back in a moment. Dolls up 301, SP's up 5. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. And what we're looking at here is that the TLT, that is bonds, that is the yield, is trading at 116.06, up a dollar forty. Now, the reason why uh, for subscribers to my opening call, we wanted to go along uh, a couple of the indices. Um, I actually had three buys, and then I took one off. The one I took off, as you would expect, is up quite sharply. But that's okay, because we managed to get at least one of them on a sharp dip, and so far, there's been a really nice rally. So... Um, this is a very select market. I don't want to get too carried away. I'd rather, I feel not confident in the sense that I don't necessarily want to go for specific stocks, but rather the generic, uh, the g generic index or the ETF. And the only reason is, if there is a rally right here, I need the momentum of an ETF, of the components together to be powering higher I, I don't feel at this particular point that I want to, we've, we've raised even a little bit more cash. I, I'm looking, I'm, I'm actually starting to look towards putting it to, to, to work in the areas that I think are just in the next four to six weeks are probably not going to be vulnerable to the vicissitudes of um, individual stock fallibility that's all so what i'm looking at here is the tlt and one of the reasons i did not go long the tlt even though yesterday i said you remember all week i was saying i think that the commodities are telling us and if we go to dba which is the we're still long had a very sharp pull back from the 22.88 high we're, we're long from the um, 13s um the reason why i said that there's a chance this week that we could see a a rally that just is an, an initiation rally. And that rally is going to tell us in, in the general market I'm talking about, about what's working and what's not working. Because if you start to see the grains pulling back, which is what's really needed from a peak E in the DBA high of 22.88 early April, and the weekly chart is a peak F, and the monthly chart is in a leg E, got to wait the whole month. But it's achieved all the things we were talking about. It went to the 23s long-term uh, topping pattern, 
that we were thought would be the re the real test of strength. Let me just pull this back. Look, uh, that was the topping pattern that I considered a top. Going back, it wasn't the top. Top goes way back to higher prices. But I'm talking about June of 2016. There was a, a, a pop to the upside. It went to 2301, and then I drew in the left side, right side price time match through one of the doji, one of the candles that I like to choose. Uh, if there's not a very obvious trough at the bottom or an arch high that says the number of bars on the left could equal the number of bars on the right, so this is this is saying to me. You've got one aspect that says, all right, commodity prices come down. That's a good thing. If the crude oil prices come down, that's a good thing. Look, crude oil is down another 36 cents today to 102.74. It failed to break into the 112, 114 area. It went to 111 something. What was that? 100 and, yeah, 1137 on the 5th of May. And now it's at 102. Not a big deal. It's been in this trading range for a little while. But that's another thing that's really important. That's 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 a secondary aspect. If you look at gold, which is really the metals, but it's just in the aspect that the dollar has held so well, we've got to keep our focus on gold because gold is the geopolitical icon of um, turmoil. And at this particular point, it says the push to the 2083 level, whatever the high was on the 8th of, of March, that was exacerbated by a whole accumulative aspect of really negative, negative geopolitical, economic, everything was going against the market. But now we've had an alleviation of that, that stress. Therefore, we are under the 200 period moving average, which was, remember, 1867, 1865 is the level I said was the target on the downside. We actually overshot that. We went to the 80, 1853. So 1849 level on, on the 3rd. It popped up to 1909. And now it's down at 19, 1857. But it's now starting to form an area of support based on the up channel. It's this little mini up channel here. We call it the Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone. At 1856, it says that if there's a weekly close, you can have one underneath it, but really, a weekly close under 1843, you've gone underneath this major support level that's been a propellant zone. Every time the gold has gone into this range, it's moved quickly up. Now, what we're looking at is if it starts to close below 1840 for two weeks in a row, let's say two weeks out of three, that would say, uh-oh, got to be careful. Because why? Because... All of a sudden, that monthly chart with the left side, right side vertical price match with the technical says you've deflected lower in the monthly candle in the MACD. A lot has to happen to get it back. The, the week, weekly is one thing, very negative, but the monthly, to get the monthly back, the nine period over the 14 period or nine period differential that is in the MACD, to get it back positive again, you would have to see a rally to 1955, at least 100 points up. And that's going to be difficult to do unless it's just some kind of conflagration that really says, oh, oh, geopolitical aspect is back in vogue. All right, looking at silver, we're looking at silver down. Um, oh, is it unchanged now? Oh, it's up five. 21.82, uh, uh, not a good pattern at all. It's broken. It's, has it really broken its trend line? No, not yet. Uh, let's go from there. To yeah okay uh, if it starts if silver starts to trade on a weekly basis two out of three weeks closes underneath 2140 and it's at 2182 right now that'll be a it can go into week but if it bounces back above uh, 21 2150 that'll be okay not great but okay all right high grade copper high grade copper here we go high grade copper. Plummets down, makes a lower low yesterday. Um, I'm talking about the peak D in the weekly chart. Remember, this is the same rule of thumb, a narrow rectangle formation that lasts, can last a lot longer than your patience. Watch out when it goes to a, a peak D above the previous highs, which it did. It went to the continuous contract. It went to 5.0625. Let me type that in. Five. Oops, 5.0625. 
0.0625, and that was back in March, I believe, and now it's trading underneath the key one of the one of the support levels at 4.20. If if copper starts to go even lower, it says watch out because this this market is going to become be under pressure yet again. Let's look at wood, the iShares, Global Timber and Forestry ETF, wood, W-O-O-D. Uh, yeah, it's still holding, but it's on its way down here. It could be doing a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Hey, talk about one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Terry Pesavento, a week from today, all-day webinar. Whew, that should be fantastic. This is the market. This is where I think you'll just shoot the lights out, I bet. All right, so we're looking at um, down now up 223, 100 points or more off the high of the day. The uh, S&P is only up 43 now. And the QQQ is still up five. We'll be okay. Two, three. Let's get that. All right. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi folks, so let's just quickly do this. Here we go, the TLT. I want to talk about this just momentarily. You see the TLT is up $1.44, up $1.26%, up at $116.17. Look at the TBT. That candle yesterday was the clue that leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology, I drew the trend line in. I showed this, I, show, I believe I showed this to subscribers on uh, Saturday, my overview section my over, overview uh, video and I said I love this thing and hardly ever works but when it does it gives you a really good insight into the arch formation the left, this is the right side ellipsal right side it's called RQ I guess is is a quarter of a semi 
is a half of a semicircle, in other words, a quarter of a circle, RQ. I, I think that's correct, ARQU. I, I, I think I looked that up. Um, and look at this. We're in a leg D. The MACD is just the, the green differential, nine period differential, just pulling back a little bit. It's still very strong. The stochastics at 82%, but flattening out and just about to pull back a little bit, still very good. The relative strength is turning down. On balance volume got a little overbought and now it's pulling back. But this is just the start of something. You remember I said you might think of a stock, it doesn't matter, it's just the the action. That can be in an up channel, it just beautifully stuck in the range, and then it breaks to the upside. When that eventually comes down, it doesn't matter what it is. It happens to be ABBV, ABV, Inc. is a pharmaceutical, but it was the pattern that I was talking about. And I said you could pull back and then see a plunge underneath the trend line. If that is, is a, a rally afterwards that cannot get back above, in this case, the pink line, um, that's going to be negative. And look what happened. It eventually fell from the 175 level on the 8th of April down to 140. And now it's trying to come back and fill the gap. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. But my point was, look at this particular pattern here, how it broke above this long term trend, but it started to hold it, but it's creating the same kind of shorter term overbought situation that says, be careful, because now I'm going to be able to draw a trend line. And that trend line says, this is the one we're looking at right here. I've got enough moving averages, etc. I don't like to do this because it's really a waste. You've got enough that you can look at. But I do like to draw it in just to show you, and then I'm going to get rid of it. This particular line, I'm going to make it red, because if it goes under it, that's a negative. And that's your new trend line. And that says if the TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond ETF, starts to close on a, out of two, two out of three sessions below 2530, 2535 is the last key moving average support, the 14 period moving average. If it starts to close under that, you can see a pullback that says, oh, I'm going to now struggle and try to get back above that trend line. And then if you make a little dreaded H pattern and go under it, you can go one to one to the downside. That'll be fantastic if yields can do that. So what I was saying is the reason why I thought there could be some kind of a bounce <clears throat> in the in the in the indices is because you've got yields finally pulling back. I don't know if it's impacting jets uh, significantly here. Nope, it isn't. The jets, which is the U.S. global uh, jets ETF is up a little bit, but that's not good enough. I uh, did make a, a second PG at the last high in the 23s and now trading in the 19.33 area. This is still saying to me overall, there's still a lot of negativity that has to be overcome. So today's action on the close is going to be really important. We'll see how that works out. The other thing that I'm looking at here is uh, let's just look at something like a CSX. I haven't looked at that for a little while. <clears throat> CXX uh, did go to uh, down 32.97. This is the rails. Made an all-time high, almost at 39. Trading right now at 32.97. And if this is a peak F, you've got to take this seriously. The rails could be pulling back even more. And this is one of the better rails. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I don't want to get too carried away. But there's a chance that we just at the moment, we're just trying to formulate some kind of a base from which to rally. And this rally, if it does unfold, is going to tell us a lot about what's working, maybe even for the next big pullback and next big rally. It's going to say, what do you, what do you need to look for next time? All right. So NKE mentioned uh, Nike which is Nike Inc. Sports and Sportswear, trading at a low 110.67. Uh, this is that peak D, monthly charts, sell signal. It's actually in a sell mode. This is Nike. It's a Dow stock. So this is another important thing, the number of Dow stocks that actually can lead us up and sustain a move to the upside is becoming far fewer. And now what we're looking at also is that within the context of Nike being a, a global uh, company, are they being affected by the dollar? What, what's going on? Is it just the inventory? Is it, whatever it is, it's a key component 
that I like to keep an eye on. We have someone in the den who kind of uses as a bell a bellwether uh, for many other things uh, in in the market. And it's not doing very well. It's broken its left side low of 116.75 from the 14th of March. Here it is at 110, six points lower. Now let's just do this. Looking at the Dow pulling back from the high of the day, which was all the way to 32,752. We're now almost 400 points below that. What a struggle for the market. And that's why I'm saying to subscribers, we're, gonna, we, we're stepping in. But we're doing it very gingerly. We built up even more of a cash position. We want to put that to work. One of the stocks that we bought just recently is holding really well. Um, and a stock that we wanted today, which I would not have gotten uh, at, the, at the open because it gapped up, had a huge move up, and now it's pulling back and it's still on my list as part of the defensive area, kind of in the food stuffs and that sort of thing. So there are stocks that I'm, I'm looking at in terms of six, maybe even to eight or 10 or 12 weeks out that are perhaps forming bases that if they can survive, uh, they could be very nice stocks. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I don't want to get any, any way carried away and say, okay, this is what we're looking at. It should be a fantastic rally. I, we're not just near that. This is the start, the first little start of trying to say, nice opening salvo, but you got to sustain it. By the end of the day, Dow's only up 132. It really, I said to subscribers, it needs to be up 220 or more after 2.30 2 this afternoon. It starts to fail because we're worried about the Fed tomorrow. That's another thing altogether. All right, questions came in. So here's another, here's a question that I, I haven't been talking about these things for quite a while, and I don't want to do too much of it until probably about June the 20th to July the 16th, somewhere in that range, midsummer. Um, and that is talk about all those aspects of the coda phase, the mega bull market phase that I, I I don't know, maybe we're never going to get there because of all the things that happen in between, between interest rates, um, the uh, the spike in uh, commodities and um, the geopolitical situation. But I, I will be talking about them as we move on. But the question came in, the Mar was it Andy Warhol's Marimel No picture sold for a fortune? Is this, uh, is this the type of thing that I'm still looking at? I know uh, the question was, I know you look at skyscrapers, et cetera, for signs of mega, mega bull market tops. But I, uh, you know that I also look at the sales of uh, automobiles, or, or, uh, vintage automobiles, etc. I look at art, I look at a lot of things, and we are seeing some residual things coming up now because there are still people with a lot of money that are prepared to put that to work in things that they just, they, it doesn't matter whether it goes up or down, they can afford to buy it right now. So yes, we're in that phase, I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, uh, folks, we're back. So if you're looking at the E-mini, remember peak T in the chat waves, what we're always looking at, made a peak T at 840, pulls back, made a peak T, almost like a rogue wave right there at 930, just at the open. It ran up to the 4,065, I believe, uh, 50 level, and then it pulled back under the 200 period moving average, ran up, and now what we're doing is we're down at 4,005. You're only only up 18 and that's quite something because of the arch formation this is you see the pattern right here so this one to one to the downside right here there we are. this peak c1 c2 double top from there to there when the h pattern fails you got to be careful because you can get let me make this uh thicker and let me make this blue and let me do this right here, new parallel. And that says you could have, in this particular instance, I always like to be a little conservative. I don't take it pure one-to-one -one initially. I go step by step. And that says key support now, uh, target and support would be at, oh, right there, at the exact low that was made three, three one-minute bars ago, that's three minutes ago, at 403.25. So this is now an important level, start to break under it, and then I just simply lower this extension. Usually I change color, just easy to do here, and there we are, pink. Okay, so this is exactly where you've got to start to see some kind of um, uh, bounce. All right, let's get back to that in a moment. And what we're looking at here is within the context of um, ARKK, a question came up. When do you think it'll be appropriate to buy ARKK? So ARKK is the ARK Innovation ETF. This is Kathy Woods. Um, and I've got to figure out, now. Is it, I thought it was wood. Is it woods or woods? Let's just put this in here. ARKK. ARKK run by question mark. Kathy Wood. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. It's Kathy Wood. People always say woods, but it's woods and they're talking about woods. It's Kathy Wood. Uh, it's her ETF and it's made a lower low today. So the question is, when do you think it'll be appropriate to start uh, maybe buying it? Because it has, as you've mentioned, as you've mentioned before, Basil, it has so many of the stocks that could, in fact, do very well when finally the queues have, a, have a, a decent rally. You know, the market, there's something in the market called hubris. And what is hubris? Hubris is, you know, I've got this expression, I haven't used it for a little while, when you pat yourself on the back, you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. Hubris is when you think you know more than someone who's probably an expert in the field 
or whatever it is. You've taken it upon yourself to make a statement that is kind of beyond your either your intellect or your knowledge at that time, whatever it is, but it comes back to do what? To smack you on the nose right there, bam. So I think that what we've seen here in Kathy Wood is is arrogance, hubris. You don't know more than the market to be putting so much money to work on stock. I mean, does she not do any technical analysis whatsoever? And uh, she might have been she might have been the the star when things were screaming to the upside. But stars are made under duress. How do stars manage to hold when things, for whatever reason, go against them? And I have to tell you, you just can't arbitrarily say, well, what was the last thing I saw? Was that last night? I saw it, uh, the flash go by. She bought General Motors. General Motors. She bought General Motors. General Motors is at 38.46 right now. I've been talking about this. You remember I said, we did this the other day. I had a question about Ford. I said, yeah, if you want to just, you know, a very short and quick trade, you could do it. But I think Ford is going to go low. It's got the Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, weekly chart at the peak D. It's got a monthly peak D. General Motors has a peak F in the monthly chart. Um, I didn't know how to call the latest peak. I have to call it a peak C minus in the weekly chart and a peak E in the daily. I just, I don't think they're ready for prime time. You've got this, you've, I mean, has anybody tried to buy a car these days? Your choices, I mean, it's just, this is what you got, take it or leave it type thing, number one. Number two is price is, I don't know how negotiable price is, but um, inventory is so short. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I just think this needs a lot more time. I think perhaps General Motors looking out, if I'm correct about the S&P eventually this year going to a higher high. Um, yeah, General Motors trading in this uh, 38 area. If it breaks, I can tell you now, based on the monthly chart, if it closes any week under 36, I have to look at the candle of um, the of November of 2020 at 34.23 and say, hey, your next level of key support is 34. Is she right? I don't know if she's right. I'm just saying that she's gone from the real tech sector to General Motors. This is an automobile. We don't think of it as a tech sector. I mean, electric cars, the, the percentage of electric cars that General Motors sells. So anyway, so the answer to the question is, ARKK, you want to have quick trades? No problem there whatsoever. Try to identify some kind of low. I think a low is coming up for ARKK in the next couple of days for a decent bounce. But wait a minute, a decent bounce? It was at the 46s. That's six, that's six points higher. That's 12, 13% on the upside. Just in three days, you would get that if it had to rally back. So um, you got to be careful. For the longer term, I've got it on my list. But you know what? Hubris says... There's a much better Dow's now down one point. The S&P is up seven. Huh. And the QQQ is still holding gains up 2.3 uh, to 2.99. So what I am saying is that within the context uh, of timing, I think you have to wait longer for ARQQ and might be where she has to announce that one of her funds is folding. I mean, I hate to say it. This is a terrible thing. Who, who, you know, hubris or not, it's just, it's lousy. There are people, there are a lot of people that are invested in this innocently, not with hubris or anything. They just thought, hey, these are stocks that I like. This is a fund that, you know, uh, you do your homework, but things come out of the blue. So all I'm saying is, no, I don't think ARKK is for the, uh, the, the a more longer term than just a quick trade. But yes, for quick trades, you can use them. I personally would rather go to something like the, the long double or triple long, the QQQ, and, and just do it that way. You know exactly what you're doing. You've got, the, you've got volume. You've got, you've got a lot of things going. Okay, that's that. So um, 
Selwyn, yeah, Selwyn Kathy with buys. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, uh, John Alive. Selwyn Kathy with buys. Um, yeah, so let's just get back to our story. Dow's down 18, Dow's down 27, Dow's down 30. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that turnaround. All right, we'll be back in a moment. And oh, more questions have come in. I'll do them just as we're wrapping up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let me just do this. So Jimmy wanted to know about CCJ. Um, CCJ is Chemico, Mico Corporation, Uranium Energy. 32.49 was on April the 15th. Pulls back really sharply. It, it, it hit the, the 20s yesterday. Today it's at 21.50. So this is really important for a number of reasons. Why? Because peak E in the weekly chart and a potential peak F in the monthly. Are we saying that the whole area of the, the Ukrainian uh, issue together with um, maybe Russia, together with other countries that produce so many of these raw materials. Um, are we saying that this, the issue is now not there anymore? I don't know, but the chart is saying, you know what, we're kind of done with all that. Even if I look at the, um, even if I'm looking at, where was it, what was I looking at just a moment ago? CCJ, I want to, oh, yeah, you know, if we're looking at things like um, IPI, I haven't done that in a few days. IPI made a peak dead, 121. This is intrepid potash. 
coming down from 121 to 60 to 61. I didn't even realize it got cut in half. Is this saying that a, a chunk of what we're looking at that was a big, big issue is now dissipating as an issue? I don't know, but we've got the China lockdowns. Uh, you cannot ignore that. That's an issue with um, getting all these different products to market. That's a big issue. So I think what we're looking at here is that some of the deeper issues have been resolved in, say, by the marketplace itself, but some have not. Look at crowd, which is uh, crowd is crowd CrowdStrike cybersecurity. I can't believe that I, to this day, I've been saying it for a year, why aren't the cyber stocks screaming to the moon? Everybody needs cyber, and but it's down. Hack, which is the ETF, is down sharply from 67 down to 45. So this is a different market to one we've seen in a long time. Not only that, particular money going from equities to bonds, this particular big seller. This is different to other markets. I would be surprised if the Dow explodes something like that. Thank you, 90% of the coming. Should be a wonderful show.